Hello everyone. Good evening. So a big and hearty welcome to all the students. I know most of you are new. There are very few who have always been there. And uh, this is a platform where you can learn everything from the scratch till the advanced um, anatomy. So not just anatomy, you can also learn all other subjects, all the 19 subjects you can learn easily. So this is um, an academy platform and you're most welcome. I'm Dr. Roini and uh, here is some of my credentials. I'm MD from KMC, Bangalore. And um, I also have PhD from Savita University, Chennai and uh, MT and MBA from abroad that is uh, in hospital administration, I got my MBA and that is from Georgia, USA. So these are some of my credentials. So I have been abroad for more than 10 years and I would like to proudly say that about nine years I have uh, worked there. So I worked in a hospital by name, Rockingham Memorial Hospital, which is located in Virginia. Okay, so this is my credential and I also... <clears throat> have many things to share with you. We'll do it slowly. We will uh, you know, get acquainted at first. So here is the first introductory chapter for anatomy because always we should not, you know, um, overestimate or underestimate. We should always be balanced. You know, in uh, physiology, we call it as homeostasis. So like that, we have to stay balanced. Okay. So we should not Think that we know everything and we don't need the basics. We need everything because the point is to come out with flying colors. So when you have your basics and foundation very clear, obviously you are going to be one of the winners, right? So that's why we have from the basics to the advanced classes. So here we have some of the terminology things. So this is the subtopic terminology. And you're watching Anatomy Topic today. All right, I'm Dr. Roini, and you can definitely follow me, my profile. I go by this name, or you can also search for me under this username, Ro Aqua. And you are on an academy platform, so you can search there with the app. You can download the learner's app, and you can look for me under Neat PG. Okay, I teach Neat PG. I teach anatomy subject for the students. So everyone has the from basics to advanced courses. So it doesn't matter who is watching. Anatomy is a subject where everyone, um, you know, um, struggles because it is one of the subjects which you study in your first year. And usually you tend to forget by the time you reach your final year and you are ready to face the PG entrance exams, right? That's the reason we have to start from the basic. Okay, here we have introduction to anatomy. So in this one, you can see the muscular system. You can see the skeletal system. You can see. So what is the anatomy? Anatomy is all about different systems. Okay, so we study. What do we study here? We study all the relations. Okay, we study all the relations of one organ with the other organ with one system in relation to the other system. How the one system, you know, when I say system, it is the entire muscular system from head to toe. Then the skeletal system, including the joints, the cartilages and the muscles that are involved with those joints. All that we study in relations, okay? So when one structure uh, you want to describe, you have to say what is in front of it what is behind it, what is on the right side, what is on the left side. So that is medially, laterally, anteriorly, posteriorly, all this you have to describe. Okay, that is anatomy. What is physiology? It is little different. Physiology is little different, but not completely different. Physiology is all about functions. In physiology, we don't um, study about different relations. We don't talk about the relation of one structure with the other structure. We just consider that as the independent structure and we talk about the function of it. That is physiology. So that is a basic difference between anatomy and the physiology. Okay, I hope you have understood. All right, so here we have. <clears throat> so in this particular session, we are going to cover some 
history, quick history, and then medical terminology. Of course, it is needed and anatomical planes, directions, and some of the movements, okay? So here we have some history. When did we find this? There are 300 years BC and second century is when, you know, all these things were discovered. Scientists, doctors, and artists, many were involved in practicing this on the dead body because we do need a lot of artists also to draw all these kind of diagrams. When someone wants to narrate something, everything is not verbal, right? It has to be drawn and shown to the uh, people. So we do need artists also. We do need doctors also because they have to approve that, yeah, this is how it is. And the scientists who discovered something and who implement something. So all this was done on dead bodies. We call them as cadavers. Cadavers were positioned flat on their backs and, you know, this is how it was studied, making it very easy to draw and refer from different positions. But whenever they used the, those different positions, they needed to give some name because it's not always easy to, you know, go back and see what was the uh, way we kept the, uh, the cadaver. It was always important that it has to be named. So here there was Leonardo da Vinci. He's the one who drew different positions and showed that this is a type of position the dead body can assume to give more in more uh, you know explanation so there was a position where uh, one was called anatomical position and there was another position which was called supine position then there was prone position so all these positions were drawn and explained by many artists so here it is what is Anna, Anna is body. What do you mean by tome? Tome is dissection or cutting. Okay, anatomy is cutting or dissecting the body. So here anatomy is the study of structure of various body parts in relation to the other body parts. So if you have a heart in the right in the center of the mediastinum, on right and left side you have the lungs. So when we describe the heart, we say there is right lung and left lung and in the center you have the heart. So that is the relation of the heart. So this is how you describe one structure in relation to the other structure. So now there are various subdivisions. So we have uh, <clears throat> gross anatomy. You'll feel that gross anatomy is much more in depth than the general anatomy. We also have general anatomy which I am going to be you know, taking up tomorrow, you are going to have general anatomy. Always things starts with general things like what is muscle, what is skin. There are different systems, but we are not going to go in deep of those systems. For example, you take the muscular system in general anatomy. Various systems are there. Muscular system is one of them. Here, we are not going to talk about any individual muscle. We are going to talk about muscle as a whole. What is the general structure of the muscle? So we are not going to talk about, for example, we there is deltoid in the shoulder, re, shoulder region. There is biceps in the arm region. We will not talk about these things in general anatomy. But all these details will be dealt with in the gross anatomy. So gross anatomy will have detail about each system. Okay, for example, any muscle you take, you have to know about origin. You have to know what is its insertion. Then you have to know what is origin, insertion, action. Then you should know what is the nerve supply. So this is a must. All these things are very, very important. So next, coming to the developmental anatomy. So developmental anatomy is also one important thing where okay, this is also called the embryology. This is also called the embryology. And microscopic anatomy is again something where you use the microscope, look at the various structures and you see those structures and study them. That is 
histology, histo, his tissue. Histo means tissue. So study of tissues is histology. So that is microscopic anatomy. Similarly, you also have specialized branches of anatomy. So all these are some of the subdivisions of the anatomy. Let's see what we have in the gross anatomy. We have regional anatomy where it depends on what region you want to learn about. Do you want to talk about the head neck region? Or you want to talk about the upper limb? Or you can talk about lower limb. Then you can talk about thorax region, the front chest region. So that is another region. And you can also talk about abdomen region. So in detail, we can study about these regions. So these things come in different volumes. So regional anatomy, this has got many different volumes, like volume one book, volume two book. Okay. So diaphragm, we take it as a landmark. And about the diaphragm, it could be one thing and below the diaphragm could be another volume. So above the diaphragm and below the diaphragm, that's how we prefer studying. Okay, next one is systemic. So you can also study by the system. So you there are various systems, like I said, muscular system. Then we have skin, that is integumentary system. And then we have system like skeletal, okay, skeleton skeletal system and then we have uh, the other system like you can uh, you know type and just tell me which are the other system Richa and Sanya good evening just tell me what other systems you know you know skeletal system you know urinary system right you have reproductive system that is male and re female hey uh, Rishabh good evening Okay, so all you students can recall all other systems, okay? Then there is also surface anatomy. Surface anatomy, what does that mean? On the outer surface of your body, okay, you can relate the various structures. So you exactly can mark on the surface of the body you can mark because before we do the dissection, or before the dissection or the surgery is started, it has to, we have to make an incision. So incision is just marking or cutting through the body. So when that has to be made, you should know where exactly the structures are. That's why the surface anatomy is required where from the outer surface of your body, you can definitely say, okay, here is the heart, here is the lung, and here is this artery or that muscle, so all that can be studied. So that is called surface anatomy. From the surface, you can study various structures. All right. So like that, you have microscopic, where you have cytology. That is, again, study of the cell. These two are very related subjects, so topics. Like histology, it is study of tissues. What is the tissue, first of all? So you have always, it starts with an atom, right? Anything starts with an atom. Atoms join together to form molecules. Then what happens to the molecules? Yes, reach a reproductive system. And then molecules, what happens to the molecules? Molecules are present in the cell. <coughs> then we have... Um, Give me a second. All right. Then we have the cell. Then cells join together like this. Group of cells is known as tissue. Okay. Group of tissue will form an organ. Organ will give rise to many organs. Many organs will give rise to what? Give to a system. Many system. Many systems you can get a organism. Or a human. It could be a human. It could be an animal or anything. Because everyone has cells in them. Alright. So that is about. So that is about various, um, you know, organization of the body. 
Now here we have also developmental anatomy where we can talk about embryology, how we developed from a single cell. So single cell was there, there was a male pro-nuclei, single male pro-nuclei, okay, that combined with the female pro-nuclei. And together they formed the zygote. And zygote went on dividing into two, then it divided into four. Okay, then about 16 and then 32 and 64. And then it became something called blastocyst. Okay, that's what turned into fetus. And that developed into baby. So all this took about nine months. So all that we can study with the embryology. How each structure developed in these nine months, we can study using the embryology knowledge. Okay, so next we have specialized branches also we have. We have pathological anatomy, which is also called clinical anatomy. So we study a lot of uh, clinical cases we study because always human body is not always healthy. It can also have so many diseases, correct? So many diseases can happen to human body and all that can be addressed by this study that is called clinical anatomy, all right? So that is clinical anatomy field. Next, we have uh, radiographic anatomy. What do we do in the radiographic anatomy? In the radiographic anatomy, we talk about x-rays because we want to look at some structures that are inside. There could be a fracture or there could be a soft tissue damage. So all these things, how can that be checked? You can check with the x-rays, radiographic anatomy. So that is also done. Then there is molecular biology here, subcellular level inside the cell. Inside the cell, various, you know, um, functions take place. All this can be studied using molecular biology. So now coming to the medical terminology, there are various ways we can, you know, understand anatomy. One of the simplest way is to understand the language. Because anatomy is not always English. Because you have the Greek words there. We also have Latin words there. It is just like learning a new language. So anatomy is not just one single language. It is a mixture of many languages. So you have Latin, Greek and many other foreign languages involved in it. That's why the subject is tough. So that is medical terminology. So unless you know the... See, unless you know the terms, the medical terms, it becomes difficult to understand. You have to learn to break the word also always. Don't try to understand the entire word as one single word. So you can always break it, learn the prefix, learn what is the meaning of the suffix, then you understand it. So here you can see the human body standing in anatomical position. What is the anatomical position? She is standing straight, looking forward, facing forward. Palms are facing forward. Feet is facing forward. See, everything is looking forward, right? So this is anatomical position. So let's write it down. Anatomical position. So here you can see the head end is called cephalic. The neck is cervical region. This is cervical region. I'm just going to share this. That is cervical region. And you have the thoracic region. Okay, this region is abdomen region. And abdomen starts at the junction of the thorax and the abdomen. You have a diaphragm. This, so this line marks your diaphragm, which is a partition between the thorax and the abdomen region. And then you have no partition, but there is an imaginary partition that is uh, between the abdomen and the pelvis. Okay. So this region, you call it as groin. This region, you call it as groin region. And here you have a small umbilical region. You call it as belly button, navel. And there are, in female, there is well-developed breast or mammary glands. And you can also see sternum in right in the center in the chest region. 
and you have shoulders. This is a shoulder. You have a shoulder bone that's called clavicle. Then you have the arm region, armpit, which is also called axilla. Then you have the elbow region. Okay, there is elbow. Then you have forearm. Then you have wrist. Then you have palm region. This is called palm. Okay, this is called palm. So the back side is called dorsum. Dorsal side of the palm. What you can see here is the ventral side. Okay, then you have the thigh region in the leg. There is knee, leg. This portion below the knee is called leg. This is called leg. Don't call the entire thing as leg. This portion is thigh region. And this is the foot region. Okay, this is called foot. And this is the ankle joint. This is the knee joint. And then here we have the hip joint. So we have various joints connecting the different regions of the body. So different regions are connected by joints. All right. So we can see the joints and in the face also we can see various other structures like the eyes we can see, nose, mouth region, ear region, all this we can see. And we also have about eight cranial bones. We have about eight cranial bones and in the face we have about 14 facial bones. So all these are present to give that rounded, you know, um, contour of the head and neck region. All right, next let's see. On the basic terminology, if you see, this is the back side or the posterior side. Posterior is also called back or the dorsal. All this means the same. Back, posterior, dorsal. What about the front one? It is called anterior. It's also called ventral or front. All this means the same. Okay, let's go to the back side. See here you have the occipital region. So this region is called occipital region. That's where you have the occipital bone. Then you have the shoulder region. Then you have scapula. This region is known as scapula region. This is how the scapula is placed here. Shoulder blade it is called. You also have in the center spinal cord present within the vertebral canal. And there is between the hips, you also have a cleft. Okay, you have a bone called sacrum here. Sacrum, it's a triangular bone. So you also have the upper limb section. This is the upper limb from here to here is the upper limb. Then from here to here will be the lower limb. Okay, entire thing is called lower limb. But this is called the thigh region. This is called the leg region. This is called the foot region. Similarly, here you have shoulder. You have arm, you have forearm, you have hand. All right, this is the neck region. So these are some of the terminology, basic terminology. You have to always use the correct terms. To understand anything, you have to use the right terms. If you use the wrong term, it will mean completely different. You have to use the correct term. Next, you have some of the anatomical directions. Let's see what direction we are referring to. When we say superior and inferior, what do you mean? Superior is towards the head region. Towards the head region. Inferior is near the foot. So it is downwards. This is upward region. Anterior, I showed this anterior is in ventral or you can also call this as front portion. Posterior is backside, or you can also call this as dorsal region. Posterior, back, or dorsal means the same. Let me change the color of the pen so that you don't feel everything looks same. Okay, so here we have dorsal and ventral. Dorsal, you can give the other name for dorsal. Now you tell me what is the other name for dorsal? Richa, what do you think is the other name for uh, dorsal? Sanya, 
Dorsal is also called back or posterior. Ventral is also called anterior. What is proximal? Proximal is towards the proximity. That is towards you. This distal is at a distance. Or you can say away from you. Away from you, very far. So, or you can say it is far. Distal is far. Proximal is near. Medial, anything towards. If you draw something, if you draw this person, anything towards the midline is medial. Away from the midline is lateral. This is lateral line. This is towards the midline is medial. Towards midline. Away from midline. That is lateral. Okay, so these are some of the things. Towards midline, away from the midline. Alright, so we have all these terminologies. Now we can see here, you can see this lady is looking in front. She is in an anatomical position. That means she is looking forward, arms are facing forward, palm is facing forward, palm is very important, palm is facing forward. Okay, she is standing upright. This is the definition of anatomical position. Standing upright, face is facing forward, head is at tip level. Eyes are facing forward, feet is flat on the floor and facing forward, arms are on the sides and also palm is turned forward. Very, very important. Okay, If you turn this upside down or you make the dot sum of the hand in front, then it becomes wrong. It won't be anatomical position at all. So it's very important you know that palms are facing forward. Next, position and directions. Now, here you have anything towards the midline is medial. And anything away from the midline is lateral. This is lateral. This is medial. Okay. So, this is proximal. This is at a away. So, it is distal. So, proximal is towards the, towards you or towards the body. Distal is away. Proximal is near. Superior is, you know, close to head. Inferior is close to the feet. Direction is close to the feet. And you have all these are nothing but the directions. And you also have right direction towards your right hand, left direction towards your left hand. So these are all directions. Okay, remember. Next, you have the position directions. If you have to remember properly, superior is close to your head or higher than any other structure you are referring to. Inferior is close to your feet or lower than any structure you are referring to. Then you have positions anterior. What is anterior? Anterior is in front. Okay, front is anterior or you can also call this as ventral side. This is anterior. This is posterior. This is picture A. This is picture B. Okay. So, anterior is picture A. Posterior is picture B. It refers to the structure which is, you know, facing back. That means you are looking at its back. You are not looking at its front. You are looking at its back. All right. Is there anyone near to you? Yes. Richa has been very interactive. Nice. You have to get interactive. If you want to learn something, you should get interactive. If you are not interactive, you don't know whether you have understood. So, it's always important that you speak out and, you know, communicate. 
Always communication is very important when you are a student. These are all the directions. You have the medial. Medial is towards the midline. And there is lateral. That is away from the midline. So here is the medial. We have the lateral here. Medial towards the midline. Lateral is away from the midline. So two things. That is again different directions. And we also have distal and proximal. Distal referred to extremities. We are talking about extremities like the limbs. It could be the upper limb or it could be the lower limb. So when we talk about upper or lower limb, distal is away and proximal is near. So see here also. Distal is away, proximal is near. Next one. This is how the things are. When it comes to the skeleton, so now we are talking about skeleton. There are bones. Skeleton is nothing but made up of all bones. We have those bones which are in the midline. So it's given in blue, right? It's all given in blue. See here, all those bones which are in the midline are given in blue. So identify them. So here we have, I'm just going to, you know, shade them. All these are in blue. Head, neck region, the cervical vertebrae, the thoracic cage, sternum. All these are in the midline, including all those vertebrae and the sacrum. So you have head and neck bones. That is cervical vertebrae. Then we have the sternum. Then we have the ribs. Then we have the thoracic vertebrae, lumbar vertebrae, and we have the sacrum. All these are in the midline. So midline is called axis. Axis, so yeah, it's called axial vertebrae or axial bones, axial skeleton. So all this is axial skeleton. Okay, similarly, we have yellow ones. They are called appendicular, appendicular skeleton. So all these, the, you know, limbs, the upper limbs, the lower limbs, the hip bones, the shoulder, the clavicle, scapula, all that comes under appendicular skeleton. I'll let me just mark it with some other color so that you can see. And that is, I'm going to mark it in this yellow. And that's going to be appendicular skeleton. Okay, that is appendicular skeleton, which is marked in yellow. Okay, so we have anatomical stuff box. So anatomical stuff box, I will uh, tell you, you have to, where is the, one second, yes. See, anatomical stuff box is in the, you know, hand, okay, just in front of the wrist, between the thumb and, between the thumb and index finger. Okay, towards the thumb, towards the thumb, you have a lonely tendon, we just, you know, um, that stands out. There is a tendon that stands out. There is one ten tendon that stands out. Tendon that is lonely is called, remember L for extensor pollicis longus is lonely, okay? Similarly, you have two tendons on the other side. They're called extensor pollicis brevis and also 
abductor pollicis. So two tendons. The one which is medial is two tendons. The other one which is lateral. See the one which is medial, sorry, this is the lateral one. The one which is medial or towards the towards the little finger or ulnar side. Ulnar side is these two tendons. So it will be obviously medial. Always ulnar is medial side. The tendon which is lonely is going to be the, the one which is going to be lonely is the lateral one. Okay, so remember that the lateral one and the medial one. Okay, lonely and two tendons. So this is medial one and there is lateral one. So this is anatomical stuff box. So let me just, you know, not have this because it's going to be a messy one. So here at this point, I would like to tell everyone that when we want to discuss more things, we always can discuss uh, more things in a group or uh, we, you can post your questions because sometimes what is taught is still, you know, you feel that there is some more thing I wanted to ask. And uh, asking such things can be done by, you know, you can clip the question and send it to your educator. That is one way you we can clarify your doubts. And another one is by joining the group Anatomy by Dr. Roini, you please join this group so that you have continuous, you know, um, clarifications from, about anatomy from me. So you please join the group. This is the Telegram group. You also can join Let's Crack Meet PG. So here also all the 19 subjects, educators will be there. You can talk to them. Okay. So this is for anatomy. This is for all the subjects all the 19 subjects isn't that nice this is telegram group join today itself okay so reach up yes um all right so i'll clarify all your doubts there next one position and directions there is superficial and deep see when we talk about burns especially when we talk about burns we say superficial burn deep burn what do we mean by that deep burn is very core to the body very close to the bones almost. Superficial one is very superficial and it is on the surface of the body. So this you can refer to the skin. Okay, this you can say it is so deep, it is close to the bone. So there could be the wounds, burns, all these are called superficial wound, deep wound. So it refers to exactly how deep it is. So these are some of the positions and directions we talked about. We talked about ventral is in front towards the belly and dorsal is towards the back. Okay. So remember dorsal is towards the back. So this is all dorsal side. This is dorsal. This is ventral. Next positions. You have prone position looking downwards. This is downwards. So prone. You look at the sun. Look at the sun. Look at sun is supine. You're facing upwards, looking at the sun. You're sleeping on a beach probably. This supine. Unilateral. It pertaining to one side of the body. One side, uni. Unicorn. Uni is one. Bi is both the sides. Okay. Uni is only one side. Bi is both the sides. It could be right side or left side here. This is both sides, right and left. Next, we have the planes. We can cut our body in, with imaginary planes. You know, you can cut it into different sections. You can get the upper portion, lower portion. We can cut the body right in the center. That's called transverse. You get the upper half and you get a lower half. Parasagittal, you can get right and left. You can get right half exactly in the middle. It is so right half and left half you can get. When you cut right in the center, it's just like a cutting a fruit. You cut a fruit in different directions. Then you will get right half, left half. 
you will get upper half, lower half. And you can also cut in the oblique plane. You also get a bigger portion and a smaller portion, right? So you may get two third and one third. All this can be possible. So these are different planes, okay? These are called different planes and sections what we get. So this is very important when we pass X-ray through X-ray beams. When we pass, you will get at different levels, you can get the sections. You have transverse, you have frontal and, you know, occipital. And then you have mid-sagittal. So you have right and other side is left side. This is the superior and inferior view. Okay. Then here we also have anatomical planes. Again explained, we have the one which is in the coronal section. So this is called coronal plane right here. So you get the front portion and you get the back portion. Transverse, you get upper and you get lower. And mid-sagittal, you get right and left. Okay, so these are sections that we get. So here we have all level of what? So at what level you want to take, you can see. So this is the cerebellum. You can see the ventricles of the brain. You can see the cerebrum. You can see this is the lateral ventricle where the cerebrospinal fluid is other, you know, coverings of the brain. So this is transverse and transverse could be at any level. Now here it is at the waist level or it could be cutting here also, here also, here, any level, any vertebral level. You can take at the level of cervical vertebra. You can take at the level of thoracic vertebra. And you can also go cut at the level of lumbar vertebra. So it depends on what vertebral level you have. So here we have taken at the level of cervical vertebra. So it is, you can also see the eyeball. You can see this is eyeball. Okay, this is the nasal cavity. you can identify so this is this so here you can see the sections with the title transverse frontal everything is shown in this particular picture and she is also standing in anatomical position so these are the transverse frontal sagittal see if you take a transverse section this is how you can see at some vertebral level. So this looks like some lumbar vertebrae because you can see the intestinal loops, right? Intestinal loops, you can see. So this is abdomen region. So region, then it should be lumbar vertebrae. It cannot be cervical because cervical, you don't have the intestine. Do you have an intestine at this level? Do you have any intestine at the thoracic level? It has to be abdomen because you see the intestinal loops. Next, you can see the frontal plane, you can see the eyeball, you can see the frontal. Here you can see, um, you know, um, hip joint, you can see this is the hip bone. Okay, this is the hip bone. This is the femur head, you can see, right? And you can see all those, uh, you know, quad. This is the section, sagittal section. This looks like some MRI where you can see the corpus callosum. You can see the pore. You can see the medulla oblongata. You can see the fourth ventricle here. Okay. This is the third ventricle. Third ventricle where the CSF is produced. This, this is the occipital lobe of cerebrum. The frontal. This is the corpus callosum. The one which like this is corpus callosum. And you can also see the spinoidal air sinus. Okay, these are all vertebrae. This is intervertebrae. Okay, what is this one? This is the spinal cord. This is the spinal cord. Oblongata. So here you can also see the nasal cavity. This is the eyes. Okay, this is the chin. Movements. We have various movements. We can, we can make it straight, extend. We can do hyperextension also. Excessive extension we can do. We can stretch this beyond the anatomical position also. 
all these movements we can do using different you know regions so it is flexible that means you know, our human body is flexible all right so with all these things i hope you have understood and uh, let's move on to let's move on to some of the important or various subscriptions that we have we have plus subscriptions we have iconic subscription all this is for you you know to try it out so that you can come out with flying colors so it's always important that you start early you if you have a goal if you are goal oriented person then it has to be the preparation has to be from the beginning like i said your basics are very important unless you have a good basic knowledge or foundation then it is just like building a house you have a good foundation and build if the foundation is not good if you want to make the foundation good you need the basics to be right from the scratch you have to learn properly so you have various subscriptions plus subscription iconic we also have special but this is free 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 okay so you have to enroll you can download the app an academy learners app an academy learners app so once you download it you have various steps you have to go to neat p section and this is the competitive exam you select pg various exams are there i to my code then you have to select neat pg and then you go for the free classes okay you go to free classes enter my code r o h i n i 10 so once you in my class okay all my classes will be intimated to you so that is a beautiful